I'm just going to do a little backtrack in here. We're going to talk a little bit about water. Kind of started for me traveling around visiting hot springs. I had a day in the hot springs that was really profound one day, real profound, where a guy came up to me and basically told me point blank to give up bottled water, to give up filtered water. Do you need plastic tea? To give up the plastic tea. You know, what's, what's, what happens when you soak an herb in water? What do we call that? A tea, right? So what happens when you soak plastic in water? What do you get? A plastic tea, right? We're going to talk about that. That's fascinating. Guy told me, Daniel, you've got to get away from that. You got. He set me on my path. Dave was talking about Dharma. This guy set me on a path. I had no idea this was the direction my life was going to go. The guy told me, Daniel, never drink bottled water again. Always go to springs and gather your own water. Since that day, it's been three years. Three years I've been doing that practice all over North America. I've been drinking spring water. Why? Because it's wild. Does that make sense? Spring water is wild water. It's not domesticated water. It hasn't been put through a taming process like pipes, like bottling, like filtration. Those are domesticating processes for water. It's, the, it's the, an in-between, something that comes between you and the earth. Where does water come from? From the earth. Not from the store. Not from the municipal tap water supply. Not through filters. It comes from the earth. All these things are surrogate stand-ins that keep you from becoming feral. Why? Well, there's a lot of interest in keeping you from becoming feral. There's a lot. We're going to bust through them. So here's the practice for those who are willing to take this up. And I know it's not everybody, but some of you are going to hear this and some of you are going to take it up. Who's taking it up? Who's doing it? That's so amazing to me. Thank you. Thank you. It started with Dave Wolf, man. It started with me asking him, hey, what filter should I get, David? What's the best filter? He was like, you're on the wrong track, buddy. You're on the wrong track. So anyway, this message might not be for everybody, but it's something you all can do sometimes, and some of you are going to do it all the time. Here's the practice. You get yourself glass water bottles. Woo. Where do you get glass water bottles? I'll tell you where. You guys got your pens out? Here you go. I'm going to lay it on you right now. Here's where I get my glass bottles. One, wine and beer brewery supply places. They got the best bottles. Used and new. Made of glass. Antique shops. i got to show you guys this bottle. This is the coolest bottle, by the way. This bottle says... Nectar of the golden life of health and vitality. <laughs> Elixir, tree of life since 1880. Wow. My brother got me that at an antique shop. Antique shops are the greatest place. Flea markets, greatest place. Garage sales, yard sales. People are getting rid of glass because they don't know the value of it. Man, the value of glass compared to plastic... Compared to plastic, why? What's the problems with plastic? Estrogen. I want to be clear from the start when I say this. This is not a sexist issue in any way. But we are dealing with a massive estrogen pollution like it's never been seen on the face of this planet ever before because much of what we've introduced into our own environment functions in our endocrine system like estrogen. But what are the implications of that? For men and women. <laughs> boys stop looking like boys. And you have a look around, a real hard look, an honest look. In your own community, in your own family, around the people you love, it's challenging because we've been taught a lot of political correctness, so it's hard for us to look at what's really going on. But there's a massive estrogen overpollution in male bodies right now that leads to the loss of secondary male sex characteristics. What's that mean? Sperm counts are the lowest they've ever been, ever, ever, ever. Sperm counts are super low right now. What else does it cause? It causes breast tissue in men. It causes total feminization of the voice. It causes mood swings. It causes prostate cancer. What's it doing in women? Hyperfeminization. Causes body fat that women have a hard time getting rid of. I'm sure nobody's. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> causes mood swings. Causes 
cervical cancer, breast cancer, fibroid tumors, ovarian cancers, endocrine system cancer. So plastics turn out to be endocrine system disruptors because they function in your body like estrogen. This has gotten so rampant because of plastic toys, plastic bags, plastic bottles, the island of plastic twice the size of Texas floating in the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and California. Imagine if you had a teapot the size of the planet and you wanted to put a tea bag in it. You'd need a tea bag about twice the size of Texas and about 33 feet deep. And you'd drop that right into the ocean, probably in a big open spot like in between California and Hawaii. And you'd turn the ocean into a giant plastic tea. So we did that. We did that. That's we're doing that. We, <laughs> We're doing that with every bottle we use, with every plastic device we get and throw away without even thinking. So, so Len's right. There's two things here. One, plastic is bad for you. Two, plastic is bad for your environment. However, it's not about oh we gotta recycle it. Oh we gotta you know we gotta do, uh, or get legislation. We just want to bypass it completely by switching over. Because we don't have to buy plastic bottled water anymore. You don't have to. Look, the thing is, it doesn't matter where the water came from. Fiji, or, you know, I live in Maine, we have Poland Springs up there. That spring water, if it's spring water, and know that in many places like Maine, 50% of the water can be tap water, it's still labeled spring water, put in a plastic bottle that's brand new, out of the factory, outgassing. Who's tasted plastic in their water ever? Come on, really, honest. If you're like, I don't participate in hand raising, come on. <laughs> you can all taste plastic in the water, because what, what's in the water? Plastic. plastic, leading to hyperfeminization of our bodies. Look, there's so much plastic in the environment right now that male fish in the wild environments are becoming female fish. It's happening to frogs, too. It's happening to alligators, too. Of course, the reptiles and amphibians are most susceptible to it because they got the kind of tissues that can absorb that stuff real easily. But it's, it's moving its way up the food web, up the food matrix. And it's in our bodies, too. And it's not just in our bodies, it's in our tap water. <coughs> There's estrogen in the water in San Francisco. <laughs> in fact, estrogen is a group of female hormones that men have and women have, but they're the feminizing hormones, the strongest of which is called estradiol. There's estradiol in the water in San Francisco. And you can tell. <laughs> and I don't mean that I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just trying to say, look, we can tell. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to harness our endocrine system again. You know what your endocrine system is? Your chakra system? Your glandular system? We need to harness that back in. Now, look, we polluted the water. However, there's a secret way out. 